Hello and welcome to Inside IT from the technology experts at Intel's own IT department. In this podcast, we look at how Intel is transforming sales productivity with social collaboration. In order to keep up with the velocity of business, Intel IT has partnered with the company's sales and marketing team to create a social collaboration platform. It's a powerful set of tools designed to enhance individual productivity and open up the collective intelligence of the sales organization. Two people key to the creation of the platform are Doug Childs. I manage a service in IT that supports sales and marketing with IT solutions. And Jim Woodruff. I'm the director of sales transformation within our sales and marketing group. Woodruff explains the move to more social collaboration began after the implementation of the company's customer relationship management system about three years ago. He says while the CRM system enabled some collaboration. It didn't enable collaboration beyond the sales teams to the divisions and across topics of interest, specific industry discussions, things like that. And so we realized we needed to extend our collaboration model to enable greater support for collaboration, greater productivity across the sales team and even from the sales team into uh, the rest of Intel. I remember early on, we had a interview with one of our veteran sales guys at Intel, and he said that, you know, there's over 4,000 salespeople at Intel. You know, I've been working at Intel for about 30 years. I personally know 128 of them. What am I missing out on? And so this is about connecting our sales folks in a better way so that they could really share their insights, ideas, so that we could get better results ultimately. That was Doug Childs. In addition to those business challenges, Childs says there were technical hurdles to overcome in implementing a social collaboration platform. One was security. It was important that we had a security model that would enable sharing, but in a secure fashion. So that was probably one of the biggest hurdles. Another challenge was integrating any new system with existing tools. So that we can integrate our CRM data with the collaboration to be more effective in how we collaborate and move forward in terms of our account and opportunity management. Childs said they realized any solution they created needed to provide a high quality user experience. This is a new social business paradigm that we are enabling and the ability for that solution to be intuitive so that users could quickly engage and get value was important as well. We wanted to not have this come across as yet another tool. We wanted it to be a much more integrated experience for our users so that they could work in one or the other environment seamlessly and see their information in one of the other environments too. The development process began with brainstorming sessions with key sales staff. From that, a picture emerged of three distinct collaboration communities that needed to be accounted for. The first, says Doug Childs, is interest-based communities. These are large topic-based communities that could be around a market segment or a technology or a product. They're strategic in nature. They're very much open in sharing. As you might imagine, these communities include subject matter experts. But it's also a place for salespeople with market insight, information on competition, and specific knowledge of customer needs. So they can bring those insights back and share them in these interest communities where, you know, our product developers and managers can really hear those insights and retool their product roadmaps to make sure that they're delivering on what the market is demanding. Account and opportunity communities are also part of the push to this transformation to more social collaboration. Child says these communities are governed by the CRM function. This is where, you know, our account teams come together to collaborate on issues around their accounts so that they can, again, drive decisions more quickly and win new business with those accounts and with those opportunities. And the third type of community is what Childs calls work communities. Open communities that anyone can go create at any time for really any reason. If somebody has a project, even if it's only a couple people, they can come together and work on that project in this community. Jim Woodruff said there were several key business objectives to this transformation to a collaboration platform. One of the key ones is to really unleash the collective intelligence of Intel to support the field in its service to our customers. That would put the field in a better position to build solutions for the customer by identifying resources more quickly and pulling those resources into conversations with the customer. Along with that, we wanted to 
accelerate the speed with which we were able to respond to our customers. And we believed that the existing technologies we were using with email to identify resources, recruit resources to customer conversations, and engage them in customer conversations was too slow, it was fragmented, and it was limited to people's individual known network. So after a thorough market search and evaluation, Doug Child says Intel chose one vendor solution for social collaboration and proceeded with a proof of concept. We broke out our proof of concept into a technical proof of concept where we could evaluate them based on performance and security requirements and ability to integrate with our CRM function. And then we did a second proof of concept around how the solution met our use models that were required to meet the business objectives. The program then moved into pilot projects in the first half of 2013. Jim Woodruff said a big part of this move to social collaboration and a bigger challenge than selecting the tool or implementing the framework involves transition change management. It's getting people to consider how they might change the way they work to take advantage of this because it's not as simple as just rolling it out. You have to help people understand the benefit. You have to do that at multiple levels, at the executive level, at the manager level, at the individual contributor level. You have to paint the picture for them of what the benefit could be. You obviously have to train them on how to use it, but helping them understand how they could use it, helping them identify a business problem that they want to apply to it is most critical. While transition change management is about adding business value, for Childs, it's also important to identify the personal value users gain from adopting a new approach. Personal value is more things like free up my workday with less emails, or be in the know so I'm not left behind, or expand my personal network so that I can move through my career ladder more quickly. And so we've really spent a lot of time thinking about the personal value triggers. Child says now this program has been piloted with a sales and marketing group. The next step is to connect the sales and marketing group to the rest of Intel. We know that our salespeople that are effective, they spend a lot of time collaborating with their divisional counterparts because they have to, right? They need to get information from the divisional product owners so that they can go sell effectively. And we also know it's important for them to bring back those market insights and share with our product divisions. Both Doug Childs and Jim Woodruff say they're very early in the process and there's still room to grow. We're gonna keep working on identifying the bright spots, those success stories and promoting those success stories. Identifying the users and the individuals who are real leaders and role models and making sure they're recognized and rewarded for the work they're doing. It's great that we have the results we have to date, but the job's not done yet. And so continuing the behaviors that we know work and thinking about this as being an ongoing endeavor to really make that social business collaboration scale to more business value over time. That does it for this edition of Inside IT. For more information on social collaboration at Intel, including a recent white paper on the company's transformation, go to www.intel.com slash IT. While you're there, you can sign up for the Intel IT Center for regular updates on IT topics, third-party research, IT-focused events, and more. For Inside IT, I'm Paul Lancor.